So my name is uh, Amr Burhan. I'm a geriatric psychiatrist. I work at Ontario Shores, uh, and I do research in the field of dementia. And I'm part of the TDRA as representative of Ontario Shores, working on um, questions such as neurotechnology and caregiver intervention. When, when you notice any changes that concerns you about dementia in your loved one, the first step usually is to talk to your family doctor to find out what's going on and if there's any medical illness that is um, in need to be investigated. So expressing the concern to a healthcare provider, such as your primary care doctor or family doctor, would be the first step. And then from there, of course, there'll be the, the steps that follows to investigate that. So, so dementia could be diagnosed at uh, the primary care level if it is, um, you know, an illness that uh, has a character, you know, like that, that's very clear that it has the features of something like Alzheimer's disease. But typically a family doctor will want uh, uh, to do the basic investigations and then uh, perhaps refer uh, the, uh, the person to a more specialized clinic such as memory clinics run by uh, family medicine. They call them the Mint Clinic in Ontario or uh, a specialist if there's some um, signs or symptoms that require neurological uh, assessment. Uh, so typically the, the beginning of that could be at the uh, family care, uh, family medicine uh, clinic, but then what follows of course is that uh, the decision where the person need to be assessed next based on what um, signs and symptoms and, and results of investigations. So the dementia is um, not only one thing, there's different types uh, of dementia. Uh, typically, uh, we want to start by making sure that there's no uh, correctable cause for the uh, memory change or the cognitive change. Uh, sometimes things such as um, abnormalities uh, in, in blood work could, could cause people to have problem with, uh, with memory. Uh, so obviously the, the first step <clears throat> is to do uh, a clinical interview and clinical exam to make sure that we find out what are some of the symptoms, some of the concerns, uh, and then of course do a physical exam and make sure that there's no obvious medical uh, findings such as you know uh, evidence of a stroke or, or a change in, in, in general health that could explain the, uh, the memory change. Uh, but basic investigation, so blood work uh, is, is definitely something we start with. Uh, looking for any signs that this could be uh, a problem with uh, the, the brain, the central nervous system, what we refer to, or in body systems such as in the thyroid or, or bladder. Um, and then, and of, of course, after that, if there's need for further investigations, we would um, think about sending the person for uh, things such as a brain image or uh, more in-depth uh, evaluation of, of the brain. But it's uh, again, it's really guided by the signs and symptoms and uh, the finding from the initial assessment, which is the clinical interview and the physical exam and the basic blood work and, and investigation. So once the diagnosis is established, of course, there is a, a need for us to be um, following up with the person uh, to make sure that if uh, the illness is now confirmed through the investigations or any further consultation, then what treatments uh, are available for the person. So to give you an idea, of course, that if, the, if we have a correctable reason, such as, you know, uh, an infection somewhere in the body, we want to treat that and see if the person have responded and their cognitive function have been restored. If a person has been taking medications that might be uh, negatively uh, impacting their thinking, like affecting their ability to remember, then changing those medication may help restore cognitive function. Uh, so after we do the initial uh, investigation and confirm what we're dealing with, let's say that we have confirmed that this is an illness like Alzheimer's disease, where it is an illness that now um, is confirmed clinically at least, uh, then there is a possibility of providing treatment that are currently available to see if we can help the, uh, the symptoms, help the function, uh, and then of course seeing the person over time to see how they respond to this treatment. Are they tolerating it well? Are they benefiting from it? Of course, uh, there's always access to studies. Uh, so a lot of our centers have studies to try to help people who are dealing with illnesses like Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia. So it, it is important to take advantage of some studies that might be 
now uh, able to change the course of these illnesses or maybe stop them from progressing. Uh, so really both the clinical intervention and access to studies will be something that um, you and your family doctor could, could explore.